evolutionists believe that dinosaurs died out over 65 million years ago. They claim that fossilization occurs over thousands, if not millions of years. Creationists know better. Fossilization doesn't take nearly as long as evolutionists say it does. The ultimate proof of this is the discovery of soft tissue in dinosaur fossils, including blood vessels and blood cells. If dinosaurs were millions of years old, none of that should be present. It's so open and shut, I had to investigate. The Museum of the Rockies is located among some of the most prolific sites for studying geology, archaeology, and paleontology, being close to Yellowstone Park and specifically the Hell Creek Formation. In 2000, the museum's preparator of paleontology, Bob Harmon, discovered a Tyrannosaurus skeleton in Hell Creek and spent two arduous years extracting it from the ground. The museum's curator, Jack Horner opted to let Mary Schweitzer, a postdoctorate he had been mentoring, examine the femur from the find. Unfortunately, due to the location of the discovery, transporting the femur would prove to be impractical, so the decision was made to break the bone into two more manageable parts. Once broken, the inside of the bone was dark brown but had a red hue. This might seem unusual, but for a geologist, it is a possible indicator of a high concentration of iron, which is prevalent across the U.S. in places like Red Rock Canyon, Nevada. The red in these materials is usually caused by the oxidation of iron. This is also why the hemoglobin in your blood is red. Schweitzer preserved the two halves of the femur in the normal fashion, but removed a few pieces from inside the bone for chemical analysis. She then began soaking some of the specimens in a metal chelator, very similar to a true acid, it tends to eat through metal and minerals much more readily than proteins. The sample was left in the chelator for what might have seemed to be an unnecessarily long time. After seven days, several fragments of the lining tissue exhibited unusual characteristics not normally observed in fossil bone. Removal of the mineral phase left a flexible, vascular tissue that demonstrated great elasticity and resilience upon manipulation. Fascinated by what she found, she ground up another sample and sent it to John Asara, a mass spectrometry expert expert at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center and Harvard Medical School. After getting a spectrometry reading, Asara found seven small fragments of protein, specifically collagen. After comparing the collagen to that of newts, frogs, and turtles, among other creatures, Asara determined that it closely resembled that of a chicken. This discovery set off a heated debate, which resulted in a pair of scientists, Martin McIntosh, a proteomics expert at Seattle's Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center, and computational biologist Matthew Fitzgibbon, discovering that the biggest error in Asara's work was not in determining the collagen to be similar to that of a chicken, but in failing to notice that it was virtually indistinguishable from ostrich collagen. Schweitzer also discovered elongated strands of what appeared to be vessels, and even later found more preserved tissues in two more T. rexes and a hadrosaur. In all of these cases, however, she has been careful not to refer to the tissues as original tissue, indicating that there was no reason to conclude either way. Whether preservation is strictly morphological and the result of some kind of unknown geochemical replacement process, or whether it extends to the subcellular or molecular levels is uncertain. It's important to note that there is nothing in evolutionary theory which precludes the survival of dinosaurs into modern times. In fact, evolution makes no predictions whatsoever about extinction other than to acknowledge that it happens. It would certainly be unlikely for a dinosaur to still be alive and recognizable as a dinosaur, but not impossible. For example, it is theorized that birds are descendants of dinosaurs. If this is true, then it should be expected that the collagen in the T-Rex would resemble chicken and ostrich collagen on some level. On the other hand, the assumption that soft tissue could not remain intact for millions of years has never been the scientific consensus. In fact, quite the opposite. For decades, insects and smaller tetrapods have been known to be perfectly preserved in amber dating back to before the time of the dinosaurs. After being trapped in tree sap, these unfortunate creatures become encased in an airtight inclusion. With nowhere to go, and no way for the elements to seep in, the soft tissue is unable to be replaced by minerals when the sap hardens. More recently, in November 2013, 
Dale Greenwalt and others published an article detailing a blood-engorged mosquito discovered in eocene amber from which they extracted fragments of hemoglobin. Of the soft tissue in the T-Rex femur, Thomas Holtz Jr. of the University of Maryland pointed out the obvious in a Smithsonian article. The reason it hasn't been discovered before is no right-thinking paleontologist would do what Mary did with her specimens. We don't go to all this effort to dig this stuff out of the ground and then destroy it in acid. The question regarding the material in the femur now known as MOR1125 is not how old it is, but what conditions caused the preservation of the soft tissue. A team led by Thomas K. challenged the notion of preserved tissue by asserting that the material was, in fact, preserved bacterial biofilm from the process of chemically breaking down. A 2010 team led by Joseph Peterson, however, determined that Schweitzer's initial findings were correct, but that preserved bacterial biofilm on the exterior of the find would actually aid in the preservation of soft tissues within. Recalling that the proteins only became free after spending a full week in a metal chelator, Schweitzer conducted experiments with proteins and iron saturation. In November 2013, she published her findings showing that proteins in an environment saturated with iron will remain intact for excessive periods of time with no signs of deterioration. She determined that higher concentrations of iron in dinosaur blood are sufficient enough to explain the preservation of soft tissues. Schweitzer has openly lamented the fact that her work is hijacked and misrepresented by creationists. She considers herself a devout Christian and even has a Bible quote on a shelf in her office which reads, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. The exciting part about this subject is that the debate is still going on. Not only is the debate over what we know about the fossil, it's also what we know about fossilization. A new question has been asked, and now there's a new mystery to solve. The problem for creationists is, as usual, they're just sitting on the sidelines watching and reporting while the real scientists are actually breaking open the bones and doing the science. This is the peer review I've mentioned repeatedly throughout this series. In case you're thinking that opposing viewpoints aren't allowed to examine the find, I'll remind you that Thomas Kay's work was an open refutation of Schweitzer's. He was just one of many scientists who dispute her findings. They're all in the fight, trading skin, while creationists do nothing yet again. What creationists do well, however, is distort scientific findings, but they are not alone. The reports on MOR1125 in the mainstream media, in an attempt to sensationalize the story, often embellish scientific findings. When this story was picked up by the mainstream media, people believed that Schweitzer had found blood cells instead of collagen. Understandably, creationists immediately ran with the story. This forced me to hunt down the original sources and get the real story. To make your own research easier, I've cited these sources below in the description. Have fun researching and exploring how creationism taught me real science. Learn more about the real science behind other creationist arguments by watching other episodes. If there's a creationist argument you think I should investigate, please comment below. It may be the subject of a later video. In the meantime, subscribe and make sure you don't miss it.